Hi there, thank you for joining us and welcome to Leavesden Studios here on the outskirts of London. Who would think that this old aircraft factory is the home of Harry Potter, the most successful movie franchise of all time? Inside these buildings are some of the most amazing sets you've ever seen, so stay with us as we go into the world of Harry, behind the magic during the making of the latest installment of the beloved Harry Potter books, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Hey! In our behind-the-scenes special, the true secrets behind the Ministry of Magic, the cast members transformed into adults, a sneak peek at the climax of the film, and someone's getting married. And next. Plus, we'll hear from the director and all the main characters. You think I don't know how this feels? Oh, you don't know how it feels! <laughs> decade, audiences around the world have watched Daniel Radcliffe, Emma Watson and Rupert Grint transform from unknowns to A-listers, commanding millions per movie. Daniel was just 11 years old when he started filming Harry Potter in The Philosopher's Stone, little knowing he was about to become one of the world's most recognisable and richest movie stars. The stakes were a lot higher in this film than they probably ever have been before, and there is a real sense that you know, this is going to be Harry's last chance to finish this once and for all. With each instalment, we've been waiting to see what becomes of Harry. Now, as we approach the climax of the series, all will be revealed as Harry's destiny is finally told in a two-part finale. It's really tense. There's no way out of here. Snatch him! The audience will be, like, holding their breath. <gasps> Are they going to make it? Okay, oh, okay, we can breathe again. Like, it's gonna be like that all the way through. I have seen more, and it is mine. There's, there's a lot of kind of, kind of running away and, and hiding and kind of finding people and, yeah, no, it's, 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 it's really quite cool. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1 is different from the previous films in that Harry, Ron and Hermione are on their own. I think the most intriguing thing about Hallows Part 1 is the fact that we're not at Hogwarts anymore. We're away from that safe environment that these characters that we've grown up with, um, they're away from that magical place. They're in the big, bad world. <laughs> The three friends are on a desperate mission to save the wizarding world, while Harry's arch-enemy, Lord Voldemort, has taken up residence in Malfoy Manor. He's at the peak of his power, about to grasp victory and defeat Hogwarts um, and Harry Potter. So there's a, there's a sort of um, emperor-like, you know, chief executive man of, with everything at his disposal atmosphere going on. What about you, Lucius? My lord, I require your wand. Jason Isaacs, who plays Lucius Malfoy, considered not returning for this film because he was worried that the senior Malfoy would have very little screen time due to his imprisonment in the previous story. And I didn't know whether I was ever going to get out of prison or not. And I met Joe Rowling at a, an awards do somewhere. And I, I, I determined to just say, hello, how are you? you know, and instead, the first words out of my mouth were, get me out of prison, I'm begging you. Uh, and she did, so God bless her. Isaac signed on for the films immediately afterwards. This is, of course, one of the most famous addresses in movie history, Privet Drive. And it's here that Harry and his friends find themselves once again preparing for an attack by the Dark Lord, with a little help from some polyjuice potion. I believe you're familiar with this particular brew. In this scene, the magical properties of Polyjuice Potion help Mad-Eye Moody protect Harry from the Death Eaters by fooling his enemies.
Wow, wow. We're, we're identical. identical. Quite an acting assignment for our Daniel. Harry, your eyesight really is awful. A highly technical scene, so lots of visual effects, lots of takes. Um, uh, yeah, it was uh, it was good fun. What was great was that at the end of the day they showed us the kind of a primitive version of what it was going to look like. And even then it was fantastic, because normally when you have one person playing several identical characters on screen or whatever it is, there's always a kind of, you know, you can always tell where it's been split screened or it's, it's never quite right, whereas in this scene there's, you know, they're overlapping and crossing over and it's, it's just, it's great, it's really, it's been really, really well done and it's, uh, it's a very good, hopefully, be a very good sequence. On the count of three! Hold tight, Harry! One! This early sequence of the film features an amazing aerial display as the goodies jump on their brooms and attempt to get away from those dastardly Death Eaters. I'm travelling with Hagrid and then there are six decoys, so the six decoys are there to try and distract the Death Eaters. And it works and I do get to the other side but I don't think Harry can quite let go of a sense of impending doom. After the break, who's getting married? As we continue our visit on location during the making of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1. <laughs>